good evening ladies and gentlemen i request to i request all of you to be little cool because a lot of fireworks are going to take place here because all of them are formidable speakers they have conviction they have courage and they say what they mean they are not duplicitous they speak their mind it's a challenging assignment for me as well but i will try my best to not get provoked and not provoke them either we have with us and the, and the topic is very hot as well the politics of vote bank and each one of them has been part of some kind of vote bank whether on the basis of religion whether on the basis of a state or whether on the basis of secularism each one of them has a strong point of view whether we agree or disagree but they are not letting their opinion to be cowed down when any shouting men anybody i must start with the senior most politician in the game of chief ministership his name is farooq abdullah who doesn't know the rangeen bashsha of kashmir politics <laughs> he is from kashmir of course the k word still power the passions of the subcontinent can we make sense of k without the s word do please hold on this one is not derogatory it is redeeming farooq abdullah the aging kabe kashmir not shere kashmir kabe kashmir is a nationalist and a patriot whenever he talked about autonomy it was not in conflict with the idea of federalism a child of dynasty his life has been inseparable from the destiny of kashmir valley even today an indispensable part of kashmir politics he also happens to be the original king of good life and good politics he believes in everything which is good for life and be healthy isn't it sir for farooq power play extends from the golf course to the danger zones of subcontinent politics it is never a zero sum game for him farooq has outlived many political obituary he is with us today to talk about his passion his game his politics and what do we do at the rajas democracy is there but rajas are still there rajas of art rajas of gone dynasties we have with us many important rajas the rajas of indian politics especially of the congress are famous for their voter friendly social conscious digvijay singh as we call him diggi raja is the original social engineer he was chief minister for 10 years and he was the original social engineer his constituency once extended from pay 3 to the path hole the panchayat of madhya pradesh he was very popular with the pay ji in delhi as well but he was popular with the panchayati raj as well both it was no politician has been able to achieve that except farooq abdullah as chief minister much to the gratification of the worshippers of social capital he celebrated both the chakra and the chip he was a vikas purush before he became a vice counselor of his party somehow he retired hurt but he is back with us for both to bowl and bat he is an all rounder of indian politics but he is a raja who never roars decentralization of power population control health and education in the kingdom of diggi raja those were the defining words of salvation his admiration in action was like a huge ngo he very popular with ngos as well he shifted the paradigm of governance though in the end his social check bounced in the vote bank politics the social perestroika of dig vijay singh is still valid upa has redefined his social engineering as inclusive growth now we come to the real person you may call anything his name is ladies and gentlemen narendra modi
But I am in Delhi. I am a citizen of India, but vote in Delhi. I am in a dilemma. How to introduce a man on whom almost every Indian has an opinion? So does the world all over. He is one politician on whom every one of you has some kind of a comment to make. Modi has become the most used four-letter word, M-O-D-I, word in the political glossary of the nation. A name that evokes awe, a name that evokes admiration, a name that also evokes revulsion, a name that divides, a name that dominates, a name that dazzles. Dar, Prashansha, Grihana, Sabka naam ek hai Narendra Bhai Modi. Modi baantta hai, Modi jodta hai. Modi aag hai, Modi paani hai. Modi maut ka saudagar bhi hai, Modi vikas ka jan data bhi hai. Aakhir, Modi kya hai? What are you, Mr. Modi? That is a question which we have to discuss this evening, whether you believe in what kind of politics. Narendra Modi is a politician who is on the permanent trial in the mind of India. Everybody trying. It, it is one non-judicial case which is being tried every day. He is a gravity-defying saga in political transformation as well. A manufactured monster who has become mesmerizing modernizer. And some of us, you may be wondering, where have you hidden your homes? Aapke singh kaang hai, Modi sahab. Jo monster ke singh hote hai, aapke singh ke ingaib hoge, kisi almari mein rakh diya lagta hai. He has migrated from the demonology of drying rooms to the methodology of a electoral field. He represents the new mythology of Indian politics. Chunao ke baad, khal nayak se nayak ban gaye Modi. Secular India charge sheeted him. Brand Gujarat vindicated him. His slogan was, Jeete ga Gujarat. Par kya iska mutlab hai? Bharat haar gaya. ये सवाल उठ सकते हैं वेदर इंडिया इज लॉस्ट एंड मोदी इज वन दैट वॉज अ क्वेश्चन बींग रेज एट दैट टाइम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन देर कांड बी ए मोदी लेस नेरेटिव और ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स लाइक इट और नॉट विदाउट इन मोदी मोदी हेज बिकम एन इंटेग्रल पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ सागा ही इज द ओनली चीफ मिनिस्टर हु हैव बिकम ए डिबेट हिमसेल्फ फॉर एवरी आर्ग्यूमेंटेटिव इंडियन लेट्स हियर एम टूडे एज वेल So I will start first with the senior most fun-loving politician who makes sense when he speaks. He is the only Kabe Kashmir who roars, let him come and roar here. Farah Abdullah, please. Prabhu, mujh pe rehm karna. Ladies and gentlemen, I had requested that uh, we should start with Narendra Modi ji and Dig Vijay Singh ji, and then the puny little Farooq Abdullah could say something. But since I have to start, subject is a very interesting one. Ever since India became independent, every election has divided. people it has divided the nation into caste into religion into provinces you mention it we used to blame the british and say their policy of divide and rule is the one that has kept us prisoners of the british for 200 years the british have gone 60 years ago but they left us with a legacy that we the politicians continue today and will continue till india is still on the map of the world you say why <clears throat> power has anyone of us thought that if we don't get power we can still serve the nation in our humble ways 
But when it comes to power, the first instance I remember of Ayaram Gayaram was in Haryana. When the entire load of the MLAs came to Mrs. Gandhi's residence and said, Why are you dismissing us? We are here, we'll serve you as good as we've served the others. And the government continued. Will we ever change? Will the young ever change those we hope are the future of India? What are we doing? Elections are near. You will find we will start tying up with people we hate, with parties we have nothing to do but to occupy the central stage of Delhi, we will even marry the devil. That is what we have come to. Look at the corruption. Why blame one? I ask all these leaders here, how do these helicopters fly? How are those jets taking off? What about the election commission which gives you an idea that you're going to fight the election and the cost you have to keep down to 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs and if you calculate an MLA or MP spending 20 crores and yet when he prepares that memorandum for the election commission that how much his expenditure has been he puts it down to within that limit and says I sold my house I put my land with somebody else and got the money and then fought the election. Will that change? Will it change the way we have to talk to the business people and say, look, you will not give us straight way, then we shall use CBI. We shall use some other agency that can trouble you. As you can see, and they will forgive me if I say, when Hindu Das brothers were put into jail, four of them, for meager 64 crore rupees. And then the court told them, two of you can go abroad, two will have to stay here. Then three of you can go abroad, but one will have to stay here. Sir, pity that the same CBI, when the new government comes, washes off the slate and says, there is nothing on record that is saying that they have done anything about that. How can we really make leadership honest? How do we accept the fact that we are behind every single item that goes wrong? We create communal troubles. We will put the tail of the cow in a temple and probably head of the pig in the mosque. And then we will pay people and even the bags of alcohol so that they will create communal tragedies whereby the whole thing will be up in flames and we will raise the you and cry about a communal problem. Now look at Babri Masjid. I'm a Muslim. I'm not a terrorist. Though at one time I was called a Pakistani, a Khalistani, and an American agent. I wish I was an American agent. Probably I would be better off than that uh, raw man who has run away and is now enjoying a great life in that country. The problem is, what do we do? We buy people. We give them every incentive which is not supposed to be done through the election people, election laws. And then we say, will there be a leadership which will be 
about this. Narendra Modi won. The tirade against him was immense. Though I must say to him, right in front of him, what happened in Gujarat was, un was terrible. What happened in my own state when the Hindus had to leave was also terrible. My head bows in shame that in 47, when India became independent, the Hindu, Muslims and Sikhs stood united to fight the invader. When they were saying, Allahu Akbar, we said, nothing doing. That is not ours. And joined Gandhi's India. Not because of the power it holds in guns and aircrafts and the army, but because of the values that Gandhi held. It is those values that brought Kashmir to India. It is those values that are dying. Today we take the name of Mahatma Gandhi, but we are miles away from he, what he believed in. I regret to say, I wish I see that India, where we have clean politics, where I don't have to use Muhammad, peace be on him, or Allah, to win a vote. First time in my life, in 87, I saw when Muslim United Front emerged in Kashmir, and I went to a district called Pulwama, and their symbol was an ink pot and a pen. And for the first time in my life I saw, instead of that symbol being there, there were flags which carried Holy Quran on the rail. That was a flag made like that. Name of Allah, and name of Muhammad. At twelve at night I came back and saw my mother in her room. And tears were coming out of my eyes and I said to her, Mom, today I see the first signs of destruction. And for the first time I see that now people are asking vote for Allah. Does Allah need vote or does Farooq Abdullah need vote? I am not against Ram. I keep on telling them that you say Ram is world's Ram, Vishwa ka Ram hai. Wo Hindu ka Ram nahi hai. Or agar wo Vishwa ka Ram hai, to he is Ram for the Christians, for the Muslims, for the Jews, for every other human being that exists on the thing, if he is Vishwa ka Ram. If he is a Ram for only Hindu, then he is not my Ram. But he is Vishwakaram. The same way, Muhammad, peace be on his soul, is Ramatul Lil Alameen. He is not Ramatul Muslimin. He is not only for Muslims, but we, the politicians, which I dread to say, we divide and think that Ram belongs to me. And how many people die? Innocent people die. No politician you will see die. No politician's son you will see die. It will be the ordinary person on the street whose house will burn, whose car will be broken, whose shop will be looted. And we say, we are going to make a great India. I leave these two leaders. I have great respect for Digvijay. I have known him when he was Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh. And he did a damn good job. I don't know why he lost. I really do not know. I think nowadays it's a damn tragedy. You do a damn good job and you still can lose. The only man who proved us wrong was Modi. <laughs> I don't know how many more things he proves wrong. But I hope that there will be a change in India. The young leaders will be given a chance to build a better India, where we will not divide communities, where we will not spread 
the virus of religious hatred. One of the biggest tragedies on our soil has been the problem of Kashmir. This problem is unfortunate. Because India, as we straight about it, the Indian government of that time promised the people of Jammu and Kashmir that there will be a plebiscite and on plebiscite you will decide whether you will become part of India or part of Pakistan. The same leadership turned around and said, no, that is all over. If we had to become part of Pakistan, we would have become in 47 and nobody could have changed us. But we chose India with our own hearts and own minds. Over the years, mistrust. This I tell these two gentlemen. It is the mistrust that grew. I hope we can remove this mistrust. I hope we can understand each other's heart. And then we can build new bridges. And let us not forget, Pakistan is not going to disappear. And nor is their policy going to disappear. Somehow we'll have to find a way out. Maybe one day Modi Sahib is the Prime Minister of India. I don't know. I don't know. It can be possible. No one knows. Mayawati is also looking forward to being the Prime Minister. <laughs> but that problem is going to be there. And I look forward and I pray that in my lifetime that this problem is solved peacefully between the two nations. If that can happen, I can assure you many of our mistrust will disappear. We can progress faster. Because I must tell these leaders, why is terrorism still present? It is because it is kept alive by a number of factors that exist on the ground. Forgive my saying so. The politician, the bureaucrat, the security forces on this side and that side. The bunny bags which are given to various agencies, to various agencies, to people, to keep things boiling, turning around, this can only end if between two nations there is an understanding. Otherwise, I'm sorry to tell you, we'll continue to bleed and the Muslims will continue to be targeted as told as terrorists. As Advani Ji told you this morning, I went to America. I have never experienced such humiliation in my lifetime. Just being Abdullah, I wanted to go and play golf at Las Vegas. I'm not a casino man, I do not know how to gamble. So my friends were sitting in the aircraft, and I have a diplomatic passport. I stood there and I said, why are you not putting me on the plane? Is there something wrong with my passport? Those days Saddam was still in charge of Iraq. I had a visa of Saddam Hussein's to visit Iraq. I had a visa on that passport. So when one hour passed and I couldn't go through, I said, what is wrong? So this girl got the other officer and he said, Sir, this thing, that thing, after all these rigmaru, he said, Sir, you have a visa for Iraq? I said, Yes, India has relationship with all countries, every country. So, how does it bar me from here? And then the rigmaru of going through those channels and taking out my shoes, I literally told them that next time I'll have a banana leaf in front and a banana leaf in the back, so that there is nothing that I have to hide. I have never forgotten that humiliation, never. Just because I was Abdullah, and the foreign minister of Afghanistan used to be Abdullah Abdullah. And I said, I'm not Afghan, 
I am not Abdullah Abdan. I am Farooq Abdullah from India, friend of America. This world we have ruined. Every one of us is responsible for it. Do not blame only the politicians. We all have played our role in one way or the other to create these differences. I leave you with one last wish. Look at a person as he is, not by the name that he carries, not by the religion that he follows, because no religion in the world teaches hatred, teaches terrorism. It teaches love, it teaches brotherhood, it teaches compassion. If only we could understand our own religion, we can understand the other fellow's religion. I have never felt an election when I went. And in India there is a custom that when you go to somebody's house, in a Hindu house they put a tikka here. The Muslim organizations in my state, Jamaat, use those posters in the election campaign against me. And I told them that this is the nation we live where this is respect they show to you. They greet you with this. And when they greet you, this is their way of showing love and affection. Now you go to temple, do you become a does a Muslim become a Hindu? Or when you go to Dargah at Ajmer, a Hindu goes, does he become a Muslim? It is the love, that is what India is, that is the difference with India and the other nations. That we have assimilated each other, we've accommodated each other to the extent of understanding each other's religion and to understanding that the God, you may have so many names, you may have so many doors to him. In Islam also you have so many names and so many doors to him. Let us hope that the leaders like them I don't call myself a leader, that they will guide the destiny of this nation much higher without the bitternesses that we have seen in these past 60 years. God bless them and God bless all of you. Farooq, thank you very much for making very good emotional and really heart, came from the heart speech, that's why. But you well, avoid... I must say one thing more, just before I interrupt him. He continued to say, fun-loving Farooq. <laughs> I'd like to correct this. I don't know how fun-loving Modi ji is, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never been very close to him. But is it wrong, I ask you, to admire something that God has given that is beautiful. <laughs> Good one. Anyway, we'll come back. I mean, I, I like what God has given that is beautiful. I admire sitting with them. I love talking to them. I love <laughs> hugging them. So what is wrong with it? <laughs> Good one. That is, I don't do it under the carpet. I do it over the carpet. <laughs> that is what you should tell your political friends. They must say what they do actually, but they don't say that. And you have the guts to say that. Anyway, we'll come back to that topic again. Fun loving, what do you mean by that? Well, I request Digi Raja to please make his comments, please. My esteemed fellow panelists, Sri Prabhu Chawla ji and friends. I am extremely grateful to Prabhu Chawla ji to have given me this opportunity to share a dais with Narendra Bhai, which otherwise would not have been possible. 
the leadership to end vote bank politics is the issue well the vote bank the word itself emerged sometime in the 50s not by the politicians or by the economists or the by the pe people of media but by a socialist culture, by by a sociologist called shrinivas well what has to be the qualities of leadership to end vote bank politics to me a leader must have the qualities of heart and head so that he not only enthuses the people inspires the people but also at the same time exudes them instills confidence in every section of the society his leadership has to be all encompassing and which touches the heart of all sections of the society it has to be a politics of inclusion inclusion of every section of the society not the politics of exclusion i have never subscribed to the politics of vote bank and particularly in a multi religious multi ethnic multicultural multilingual country as that we have politics of vote bank has a certain shelf life because every time one issue cannot be repeated over and over again but at the same time every political party which wants to get into a get to a foothold in national politics raises the issue of religion regional imbalance or regional bias or caste we have seen <clears throat> the foundation of the vote bank politics has come in from the people who have brought in the politics of exclusion on the issues emotive issues of religion emotive issues of regional bias and emotive issues of caste we saw a political party which had been reduced to in the single digit the issue of the emotive issue of ram temple number of other political parties issue raised the issue of regional bias regional discrimination and after mandal commission some of the political parties raised the issue of caste exclusion another political party went to the extent of raising the provocative slogans of slogans like tilak taraju aur talwar inko maro jute char but ultimately once they got the foothold they had to come to the politics of inclusion when they said hathi nahi ganesh hai brahma vishnu mahesh hai those who initiate the politics of exclusion the politics of hate the politics of religion or casteism or regional bias suddenly find themselves that they have reached the threshold beyond which if they have to go they have to be more inclusive in their approach a political party which took pride in raising the issues of hindus which raised the emotive issues of religion had one of its senior most leader going to the memorial of the jinnah and calling him the ideal secularist mr jinnah who communalized the indian polity of this country before the independence and before the partition of pakistan and india who at that time called india <coughs> a land of the hindus and the congress party a party of the hindus molana abdul kalam azad 
as the poster boy of the Congress Party, suddenly found himself and in an excellent example of double speak that he found Mr. Mohammed Ali Jinnah as an epitome of secularism. He had to face flak in his own political party. But what I am trying to say is that every political party which wants to get a foothold in Indian politics has been new to this old bank politics. Congress has often been charged of appeasement of Muslims, has often been charged of minoritism. Once Rafi Ahmed Kidwaiji was approached by some young Muslims in Uttar Pradesh. They had some issues. They said, you must understand, I am not the leader of the Muslims. The leader of Muslims is Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. You should go to him. He would be taking care of the issues of the Muslims, not me. Farooq Bhai is here today. You heard one of the most emotive speeches where he has spoken from the heart. His father, Sheikh Sahab, one of the greatest leaders of all times, he had the option to merge the Kashmir Valley with Pakistan. But he had more trust in the secularism of India than the Islamic country of Pakistan. What happened later on is a different issue. But we cannot really forget the tall leaders who spoke for the country, who spoke, who spoke for all sections of the society, rather than speaking on parochial lines of caste and religion. We have always fought the fundamentalists. Even before the partition, my party had always fought the fundamentalist Muslim forces of Muslim League on one side and Hindu Mahasabha and the RSS on the other side. My own experience has been, whether it's the Hindu fundamentalist or the Muslim fundamentalist, they work in tandem. Until there is respect for the Muslim fundamentalism in the society, the Hindu fundamentalism will not get space. And I have always felt that if both dealt with sternly, there would be a greater communal harmony in this country. I and my party have been charged of minoritism. Well, minoritism is something which is a part of politics of inclusion. If I am charged with minoritism or appeasement of Muslims, I would gladly accept the charge. Because after all, every civil society in this country, in the world, every democratic country in this world is sensitive to the cause of the minorities. So when you speak to, about the minorities, their sensitivities, we heard Farooq Bhai, what goes on in the mind of the Muslims when atrocities take place? What goes on in the mind of the Muslims when Pakistani propaganda has always been saying that the Muslims of India, beware, you will never find justice. And then we find ourselves in a situation where, in spite of the fact that there have been obvious statements, obvious confessions, of people taking part in communal carnage, they have been saved, they have been protected by powers that be. How can you win back the confidence of these people? How can you win back the confidence of all those who have suffered the communal carnage, whether it's a Hindu or a Muslim? The point I'm trying to make is that we have to be very careful as to what we say what we do to keep the country together. Well, we have also been charged sometimes on the issue of reservation, whether it's a Shidrukha, Shidrukha, OBC reservation. 
आई एक्सेप्ट मेरोटोक्रेसी इज टू बी रिस्पेक्टेड बट एट द सेम टाइम वी हैव टू ऑल्सो सी एंड वी कांट इग्नोर द फैक्ट द हिस्टोरिकल फैक्ट दैट दीज सेक्शन हैव फेस्ड ऑपरेशन they these uh, these sections have faced humility uh, and uh, at uh, humiliation for thousands of years to bring them to a level where there's a level playing field it takes time and that is why we have to look into the issue of reservation for schedule caste schedule tribes and your other backward classes we the time has come now we have to think and we have to bring about some kind of a political consensus on the issue of reservation we have to think about amending the constitution why we should not bring the economic criteria on the issue of reservation why should we allow those families who have done well belonging to these sections who have who have become income tax payers why should we not think in terms of bringing an amendment in the constitution so that these families can be excluded through the creamy layer concept i have always said that we are at the threshold of becoming a superpower the last few years have seen the emergence of economic power of india we have greater challenges to face we have number of people who have done exceedingly well in the age of globalization we were discussing just now that in the forbes magazine list of billionaires there are more indians than probably japanese and chinese so the time has now come to look into the issue to look into the leadership issues and look into the issues of what are the challenges facing this country today there is also a fact that we still have large sections of the population below poverty line the disparity between the rich and the poor is growing we have to address to these issues we have to provide more funds and more uh pump in more money to bring about social development a socio economic development of the deprived classes but at the same time we have to set new pace for personal and collective achievements leadership has to be in line with these challenges apart from the usual attributes leadership now needs a different liberated mindset it demands an attitude that is all embracing and a vision that is all encompassing any restriction by any parameters is just not acceptable long before the modern world came up with the idea of globalization of or the world as a global widget village our upanishads had their own vision there is a sanskrit shloka ayam nijah parovetti garana lagu chetasham udara charitarantu vasudev kutumbakam it means this is mine and that is yours is a thinking of a petty mind for noble minded one the entire universe is a family well that is the foundation the ethos the indian ethos of politics of inclusion which can be the only way to end vote bank politics in india not the politics of exclusion not the politics of hate and acrimony thank you thank you dikhi raja for giving us a big picture which is which is more applicable for long long term politics anyway we will leave that for later question and answer session that why politician don't answer immediate questions let me leave it to immediate questions of our narendra modi and bhai now it is your turn you can talk about the leadership